Hey guys, welcome to a new video. It is so good to see you. If you remember in one of my last videos, I've shown you how to drill precise holes into your handlebars using this drilling guide. And this works great. It's definitely worth the money. But there were a few parts of the process that I could improve on. And I'm so grateful that so many of you pointed these things out. And one thing that I also thought about, but I didn't come up with a proper solution was how can I protect the cables from the sharp edges? For the outside, I bought a set of countersinks. So you can use these and they'll take off the sharp edges. But how do you do that on the inside? Because you can't reach there. And I actually came up with a solution that's very improvised that I, in the end, didn't show you because, I don't know, I just didn't feel great about it. Um, but I'm gonna show you right now because this is just the process that we all go through. We have to figure stuff out. So what I did was I cut some pieces of heat shrink that would fit into the holes and then I would stick them in there and make little cuts so that I could fold them over and then secure them with some electrical tape and then poke a hole through the electrical tape and I thought that way the cables on the inside will be protected. But First of all, it decreased the diameter of the hole and then also it's just, I don't know, I didn't feel good about that solution because it was just so, I don't know, improvised as I've said and with all the high quality components, I didn't want to go that way. But I also didn't know any other way. I also used a small file, but I don't know, that's just, it just didn't do the job. So in the end, I finished the video, didn't put it in there, uploaded the video and then like sent from heaven, Drew just commented down below and said like, hey, you should get a set of reversible countersinks. I didn't even know that this existed. I did some research and in the end I bought this. So this is from a company called Noga and this set includes three different sizes of reversible countersinks. They're not that cheap, but in the end, this set only is 50% more than if you get one individual. So since I spent so much money on the parts, I don't want to ruin the build by, I don't know, being cheap. Being cheap has actually bitten me in my, you know where, so many times that, oh no, I now question my attitude towards being cheap. So. We have three countersinks that we only need one of. I need this tiny small countersink. So it looks like this. The design is pretty straightforward. It's basically just a stick that is smaller on the bottom. You have a button on top and a little blade at the other side. If you push the button, that will flip the blade and you can insert the whole thing into the hole that you've drilled. And you can actually flip the blade 180 degrees if you don't push the button and that way you can use it on the outside and the inside. So let's go ahead, see if it actually works and if it's worth the money. I have the smallest countersink right here, which is for holes from three to around six millimeters. And I first have to take off my amateurish solution. That was a funny solution. Right, let's try the outside first. It works well even though this is already deburred. Let's see how it works on the inside. All right, we need to flip the blade in the right position, like this. Push the button, push it in, release it. There we go. There seems to be an edge because if I want to twist it left, it doesn't work, but if I twist it right, it jumps right over. And I think doing that a few times, will really help. So after 20 or 30 seconds moving it right, the edge is actually not that noticeable anymore. So now I can also twist it to the left. And I guess if you do that for like 40 or 60 seconds, then that should look pretty nice inside there and protect your cables from getting damaged. Right, nice. That worked pretty well onto the other side. First, let's take off this electrical tape. The reverse countersink is definitely a much better alternative than this one because first of all, it looks very unprofessional and then also it decreases the diameter of the hole and oh, I mean like if anyone had to repair this but me, I would probably wonder like what the heck 
happened here. So, second miss. <laughs> Anyways, it's a little hard to tell whether the blade is still in the right position, but I think you can feel it. If you do this for a while, you can definitely feel that these harsh edges that the drill leaves are smoothened. All right, cool. That's super nice. Um, I would like to see how much it actually does. So I'll cut a piece of sheet metal, drill a hole, test it, and then we can actually see how much it does. If you drill holes into metal, you'll get sharp edges. And especially here, where we're going to run the cables inside, these sharp edges can damage your cables. Let's see if the reversible countersink can actually do something against that. Just twist it into both directions. Can you see that, how it actually removes the sharp edge? You definitely have to do this for a while. And also in both directions to get it smooth. But look at that, after like 30 seconds or so, it already looks much better. Now the sharp edges are almost all gone. If you want to be super accurate, you just do this for two minutes and you'll have super smooth edges. There we go, two minutes and it looks perfect. So it takes a bit of time as this little experiment has shown, but in my opinion, it is definitely worth the time and the money. If you also have a setup like this where the cables run inside the handlebars, and you want to check out the set, I'll link it down below. And yeah, as always guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked this video and I'll see you in the next one. Drew is actually one of those guys of you who is always engaged in the process. He comments and I oh know he has so many tips. So thank you, Drew, if you're watching this. I really, really appreciate your help. That is awesome. Hearing back from you guys um, just helps me out a lot. Like this time, because research takes so much time. I probably spend as much time on researching parts and tools as I do working on the bike. That's why progress is kind of slow. But um, yeah, this really helps me out. 